big chat. Of course, Stansted's not very far away. No, it's a fighter, it's a fighter. Typhoon over there. He's, he's a hard time flying so slowly. He's having a hard time flying behind the Spitfire because it's so, it goes so slow. And it's not meant to fly that really slowly, but it's. It,
ran in towards the uh, display system for today, the 2015 Royal Air Force display team. To a uh, seat climb for a nose over. Oh my goodness, you were close to it. Look at that, you were all set. The For a pedal third, the IFC of Chinooks, the largest after that was the US Army, which was the fighter search operator. Thomas, and having been released 
from the dual tow. We now have the two vintage gliders, the camouflage one, the Slingsby Kirby Kite, the mainly red one, the Slingsby Petrol. There were concerns in 1940 about a potential glider board assault trip carrying gliders on the United Kingdom. Thereafter, Germany had successfully assaulted Belgium and particularly a fortress at Ebel in May 1940 using that very method. They needed to discover whether the radar network around the United Kingdom could pick up such gliders. And tests were undertaken by the telecommunications research establishment at Worth the Travers in Dorset in conjunction with Flight Command. They used various requisitioned gliders. Scott Vikings, a Schleicher Röhm Hussard, an Egyptian Mini Moa, plus the Amro 504 and Tiger Mont Pugs I mentioned earlier, they flew largely from the airstrip of the work for Travers site. A couple of leading glider pilots from the Between the Wars period, Mungo Buxton and Philip Wills, were very heavily in the boats of the United Kingdom to detect the obviously silent approach of these machines and uh, a few times it was found that they didn't detect them until after they passed over the coast which wouldn't have been of much use in the event of an invasion but here they come in now on a formation landing approach the Kirby Kite and the Sunsby Petrol Kirby Kite owned by David Bramwell the Petrol by Graham Saw the petrol, the only airworthy one in the world. The 17 the Sally B. The Battle of Britain, the one that was in service with the then US Army Air Corps in uh, 1940. And this example, named Sally B, is the last airworthy one in Europe, regularly to be seen in skies through which thousands of these aircraft flew on operations by the US 8th Air Force during the latter stages of the Second World War. It's operated by B 17 Preservation, one of the private operators based here. IWM Duxford, under the leadership of Ellie Salimbo, with her team of dedicated professional volunteers. And it's quite remarkable that this year celebrates the 40th anniversary of Sally B coming to live here. And Ellie has been so closely involved with its operation, luckily as the aircraft operator, for all of that time. A four-engine heavy bomber, of course. This one built in 1945 by the Lockheed Vega Park plant in Burbank, California, but the prototype of the Boeing Model 299 had made its maiden flight a decade earlier in July 1935, entering U.S. Army Air Corps service in 1938. The time that the design was far from perfected. Here, the B-17 model in many ways the definitive flying fortress a very different beast. B-17, Luther, and the rest of that one. Wow.
from the US Army Air Force on this occasion. And also from the B-17 that deployed to the UK with the 8th Air Force from 1942. This late model G model has 13 machine guns, able to carry a maximum normal bomb load of 8,000 pounds, and that these aircraft can do on daylight raids to German industrial targets. Survivability improved when the likes of the P-47 Thunderbolt and P-51 Mustang long-range escort fighters became available to escort the bombers all the way to their targets, but losses were still grievous, not least the flag. This despite the fact that the B-17 was a legendarily tough airframe. Bomb doors coming open on this path. Bombay doors open.
troops operation by visiting www.sallyb.org.uk. But now we turn to the finale of today's display here at IWF Duxford. The 3,000 or so airmen officially recognised their involvement in the Battle of Britain remain immortalised as the few a phrase spoken by Winston Churchill in the Commons on the 20th of August 1940. That remains perhaps the most potent tribute for those who fought, those who died, in the name of our freedom. The gratitude of every home in our island, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abode of the community, goes out to the British Airmen, who, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant trend and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their promise and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. So the show was over to leave? Couldn't wait till the show was over to leave.
won a bike though. He was so oh, much sure, yeah. Yeah. Too, oh, yeah. too many heads. Yeah, because a lot of people are leaving. Come on then. Just be careful you walk. Alright, what time give you back? I'm going to find you down now.